I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will try to understand the terms direct relation and inverse relation. Let me take up a simple example of distance, time and speed. Let us say that uh, I am walking at a constant speed of, let us say walking at constant speed of 5 kilometers per hour, right? So let's say I'm walking at a constant speed of 5 kilometers per hour and with time I have to find the distance traveled, right? So, so with this constant speed, as the time passes, the distance will increase, right? So every hour, 5 more kilometers can be covered, right? So if I continue to walk at a constant speed of 5 kilometers per hour, then what happens to distance with time? Let's look at at in the form of a table. So let us say this is my time in hours and the distance in kilometers. In that case, in the first hour, I will reach a distance of about 5 kilometers. In the second hour, I'll cover a distance of 10 kilometers. In the third hour, since I'm going with the speed of 5 kilometers per hour every hour I'll cover 5 more kilometers you can see like that so 5 more will give me 15 or I could say 5 times 4 4 will give me 20 so in the fourth hour I would have covered a distance of 20 kilometers so likewise the distance increases with time so what we see here is that the distance is proportional to time when speed is constant. Let me say speed is s is constant. Is that okay? So whenever we write this, this is a symbol for proportional to. That is to say, these two which we have taken as variables, t for time, d for distance, as time increases, distance increases, so we say distance is proportional to time so that means it's a direct relation so as time increases distance also increases as time decreases if we decrease the time look at it the reverse way in four hours i've covered a distance of 20 kilometers in two hours i would have covered only 10 kilometers do you get the point proportionality sign is replaced by a constant always. So in this case, our constant is speed. So generally, we write constant k, generally, and we replace this proportionality with equal to sign, and we make a formula, which is like distance is equal to k times time, right? Since we have used s as our constant speed, we'll say, well, in our case, k is equal to s, is it okay? So that is how we derive a formula. And in our case, speed is 5 kilometers per hour. So we could write, in our case, distance and time are related with the formula 5t, where speed is 5 kilometers per hour. Do you get the point? So that is how we have been seeing direct relation. So as one variable increases, the other one, which is dependent on that also increases linearly. So you'll see this is a linear relation. Distance is 5t. So we have different terms here. We say direct relation is always linear, right? Do you observe that? So it's a linear relation. This is one thing which we observe. Second thing is if if time is zero, then distance is zero, right? So, so if, so it always goes through. So if I graph this, what will happen? Let's look at the graph and then I'll write down what happens when time is zero, right? So let me sketch a graph. So let us say this is the graph for the same. So as the time increases, distance increases, at the rate of 5 kilometers per hour, right? So, so let us say that is the graph where for every hour 
it increases by 5. Do you see that? So 1 hour, 5 kilometers. Next hour, 10 kilometers and so on. Do you see that? So it is a direct relation and you will find that it always goes through the origin. Right. If time is 0, then distance is 0. Correct? So that means you are not started walking. Is it okay? So it is a direct relation which is always linear and it goes through if you graph it it's a graph linear means a straight line so basically you'll find a straight line through origin so that is what we observe in case of linear relations which are direct in nature right so that is the direct relation now let's change the situation a bit. So in this case, what I will take is that I have to cover a distance. So we have a distance as fixed. Let's say now we fix the distance. Okay. So let me take a distance of, let us say, 1200 kilometers. Okay. So this distance is, is fixed for me. So I'm going from point A to point B. And the distance between these two points is... 1200 kilometers right now let's say I'm going in a car to cover this distance and s is the average speed of car and t for me is time taken to cover this distance right Let us say we change the situation a bit. So the major difference now in these two situations is that earlier my speed was constant. So I saw or developed a relation between distance and time. This time I am keeping speed constant. So we are traveling at a constant speed, let us say, right? Then what happens to time for a fixed distance, right? So let's make a table like we did last time. Uh, so in this table, what we will change is, we'll change the speed. So the independent variable in this case will be speed, which we can say is in kilometers per hour. And we'll find time in hours to cover this distance from A to B, which is 1200 kilometers. Okay. So let us say that the speed is uh, 100 kilometers per hour. In that case, how much time will I take? So if the speed is 100 kilometers per hour, then to cover a distance of 1200, I will take 12 hours, right? So in with 100 kilometers per hour, it will take me 12 hours to cover this distance of 1200 kilometers. Okay. If I reduce this speed to half, let us say if I make it 50 kilometers per hour, the average speed, in that case time will be doubled. Right? So instead of 12 hours, I may take 24 hours. Do you see that? So what is happening here is that as you decrease the speed, time is increasing. Right? Earlier, what was happening? As you decrease the time, distance was decreasing right in this case if you decrease the speed time is increasing that means they are not directly proportional however there is a relation right so this relation when one quantity when decreases, the other increases right is called inverse relation right so this kind of a relation is inverse relation so so we call this as inverse relation Where what is happening in this case, as the speed decreases, time increases, but if I increase the speed, time will decrease. If I go faster, I'll cover this distance in less amount of time. That's what it is, right? So what we can say is that for a fixed distance, so in this case, for a fixed distance, so distance is fixed. So we've said D is constant. 
So for a fixed distance, time taken is inversely proportional to speed, right? So we can say time taken is is inversely. Now how I proportional this I understand. How do I write inversely proportional? That is to say I have to divide by speed. It's inversely proportional to speed, kind of like this. Now since we are changing speed and finding time, I will use speed as my independent variable and time is dependent on speed. That's why I wrote t on the left side. Does it make sense to you, right? Now, as I said earlier, this proportionality sign can be changed by equal to by placing a constant, right? So it becomes some constant times one over speed, where we are saying distance d is constant, right? So, so we again derive the same formula. So we say, well, time is equals to distance divided by speed. Do you see that? So what we came to is kind of similar thing, and we have related distance, speed, time. Let me make a triangle here to show the relation which we are talking about. So first we said that distance is equals to speed into time, right? Because this constant was speed. So distance is speed into time. And now we are saying that time is distance divided by speed. So we can relate both with the help of this triangle. Easy to remember, right? Easy to remember. So, so we get this formula where we say time is equals to distance divided by speed, okay? Where distance d is constant, is it okay? For our case, we are taking this distance as 1200 kilometers. So we are saying time for our case is 1200 divided by the speed, right? Since we know distance is 1200 kilometers for our case, correct? So we can find so many different values. If I use, if I increase the speed from 60 to 50 to 60, correct? In that case, time taken will be 1200 divided by 60, right? So zero, zero cancels and six becomes 20 hours. So we get 20 hours for this travel. Time of 1200 kilometers will be covered in 20 hours. So we see that time is inversely proportional to the speed if the distance is constant. I hope by now you must have understood how direct and inverse relations are linked, right? So a same formula when switched either way, we can change it from direct to inverse and also from inverse to direct, right? So here we had the formula as distance equals to speed into time. And now we have changed this formula and we are writing speed is equals to distance divided by time. Do you see that? So this is a direct relation and that is the inverse relation. In both relations, what do you see? We see that there is a constant of variation, right? Now, how is this constant of variation related? So let's get back to the basic formula where we are using constant. Constant could be anything. In our example, distance, speed, and time, we took constant as first case, we took constant as speed, and in the second case, the distance. But in general, what you will observe is that this constant for direct variation is equal to the ratio of distance and time. Is it okay? Distance of two, the ratio of two variables. And in this case, we found that this constant k is equals to product of the two variables we're talking about, the dependent and independent. That means speed into time. Do you see that? So for inverse relation, constant is equal to product of the two variables. And for direct relation, constant is equals to ratio of the two variables. Correct? So that is how they are related. Now we have shown you the graph for direct relation as an exercise. Can you tell me what kind of graph do you expect 
for this relation which is inverse relation hmm that's interesting so let's try to sketch one you can pause the video sketch the graph for this one right so i'll not provide you with accurate graph but i'll give you an idea as an exercise you can actually plot some values here and then sketch the graph well you will notice that if i decrease the speed let us say if i decrease the speed to just 10 kilometers per hour then it take me about 120 hours to cover this distance of 1200 kilometers now the question so we can keep on decreasing the speed the time is going to increase if we increase the speed then time will be lesser for example if i make it 120 kilometers per hour then the time taken will be 10. so on increasing the speed time decreases that is to say if t is along the sorry i should write s the speed is our independent variable if i increase the speed then the time is very short to cover the same distance so time in hours will be much lesser right so what do you get you'll get a graph which is kind of decreasing that is the graph which you expect when inversely proportional now the question here is can i write speed as zero that is the question that is to say here we went through the origin right so there was a point at the origin if time is zero in that case distance was zero in this case can i have zero as the speed and ever cover this distance well if zero is the speed then this distance can never be covered because we never started right so and secondly here i cannot divide by zero dividing by zero is not possible is that okay so we cannot cover the distance if speed is zero so remember one thing that the speed can never in this case be zero to cover that distance so that is not permitted so that value of zero cannot be permitted since we cannot divide by zero is that okay it is in denominator so that is a restriction we do not have any such restriction when we are talking about direct relation in inverse relation there is always a restriction that you cannot divide by zero so if you look at this graph it will be kind of like this All right so so you can actually take some more values plot and see for yourself how does it look like so you'll notice that we cannot have x value the independent value as zero and second we will also notice that time can never be zero also because you know you have to be at very 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 high speed to be to cover the distance in no time right so it could be no time for very high speed but can never be zero so zero is not in in the graph of this function when we talk about inverse relation that, that is kind of very important to understand so i hope with this you understand that direct relations could be represented by a constant equals to ratio of the two normally we take x and y values is it okay so let me write down this as the ratio of x and y so in that